In the last few videos we've been dealing with complex numbers. Let's now turn our attention to complex and complex valued functions. So as a specific example, in electrical engineering we often deal with something called the Fourier transform, which we denote x of f. And the Fourier transform x of f is just the Fourier transform of the continuous time signal x of t. And this function right here, which is a function of f, is a complex valued function. It takes a real input and it spits out a complex number. The Laplace transform is another transform we often deal with, and we denote this x of s. This is a complex function because it takes a complex input and it returns a complex number. Similarly, the z transform, which is a transform we use for discrete time signals, is a complex function since it takes a complex input z and returns a complex number itself. So these are some examples of complex and complex valued functions that we often encounter. And you can probably go ahead and guess the definition, the precise definition of what we mean by a complex and complex valued function. And we're going to go ahead and define those more clearly here on the subsequent charts. But before we can define that, we need to review some other basic definitions, namely the domain and range of a function. So first let's talk about the domain of a function. The domain of a function is just the set of valid inputs for the function. So if you are allowed to query the function at that point, that point is in the domain of the function. As a very simple example, let's think about the function x of t. x of t equals cosine 2 pi f t. So it's just a, sin or a sinusoid with frequency f, cosine 2 pi f t. So the variable here is t. We are allowed to query this signal x of t at any time t that we want on the real line. I can plug in t equals 0, t equals 1, t equals 3,256.4. Any value for t, I'm allowed to plug into this function and evaluate it. So the domain of this function is the entire real line. So we denote the entire real line by this kind of um, capital R. The range of the function. The range of the function is the set of valid outputs for the function. So for the example that we've been just looking at, x of t equals cosine 2 pi f t, no matter what value that I plug in for t, cosine of 2 pi f t, regardless of what the frequency is, is always going to be some number between minus 1 and 1. If you plot this signal, it just oscillates at frequency f, and it oscillates between values minus 1 to 1. So the range of this function is actually the interval minus 1 to 1, and this interval on minus 1 to 1 is actually a subset, so we use this right here to denote a subset, of the real line. So the range of a function is just a kind of a set of all possible outputs of the function. Here's another example. Let's talk about the range of the Fourier transform of a signal. We know in general that x of f returns a complex number. So in general, its range is some set r, which in general is a subset of r2. So r2 is just the complex plane. You can picture that as a two-dimensional um, plane. The horizontal axis is the real axis, and the vertical axis is the imaginary axis, so it has two dimensions, what we call R2, and that is just the complex plane. So since the output of this is always a number in the complex plane, we know that its range has to be some subset of the complex plane. It could be that for your sp specific Fourier transform, you can reach any point in the complex plane, and then in that case, the range of x of f would simply be R2, but in general, for some specific x of f, you might not be able to reach every single point in the complex plane. So in general, you're going to be some subset of the complex plane. So now that we have these basic definitions of domain, just the set of things that you can put into a function, and the range, the set of things that come out of a function, we can go ahead and define what we mean by complex and complex valued functions. So now that we've defined the domain and range of a function, we can go ahead and define what we mean by a complex-valued function. A complex-valued function is one that takes elements in R, so it has a domain of R. Its domain is some subset of R in general. It could be the entire real line, but in general it could be some subset of the real line. And then it returns a value in R2, which is the complex plane, right? R2 has two dimensions. It has a real axis and an imaginary axis. So you can think of the complex plane as R2. So a complex-valued function takes real inputs and returns complex 
outputs. As a specific example, x of f, the Fourier transform of the signal x of t, is a complex valued function. Its input is some frequency f. That is a real number. So the domain of this function can be any real number, so its domain is the entire real line. And then in general, the output of this function is a complex valued um, value. So it takes in real values, it returns complex values, so this is a complex valued function. If you want, you could extend this to a higher dimensional signal. This right here is what we call kind of a one dimensional signal because there's only one input f. You query it with one quantity, so you can talk about signals that have two dimensions. Maybe it's an image, for instance, but for most of the things that we do in electrical engineering classes, at the undergraduate level anyway, one-dimensional signals are all that we uh, worry about typically. So that is a complex valued function, takes real inputs, returns complex outputs. So what is a complex function? Well, a complex function is a function that takes elements in its domain, and its domain though is a subset of the complex numbers. So its domain, if we call that D, is some subset of the complex plane, and then it also returns values in the complex plane. So whereas a complex valued function took elements from the reals and returned a complex number, a complex function takes elements in the complex plane and returns an element in the complex plane. As a specific example, consider the Laplace transform x of s of the continuous time signal x of t. This input variable s in general is written as sigma plus j omega. So this input to the function s is a complex number. So it has its domain, some subset of the complex plane. And after you compute x of s, you in general get out a complex number. So complex numbers go in, complex numbers come out. So this is a complex function. Similarly, x of z, which is the z transform of the discrete time signal x of k, this is also a complex function. z, you can think of as r times e to the j theta. It's some number in the complex plane, so there's a complex input. And again, this function, x of z, in general returns a complex number, a point in the complex plane, r2. So complex functions take complex inputs and return complex outputs. So let's go ahead and look at an example. So here is an example of a complex valued function. Here's kind of a typical Fourier transform that you might encounter when doing some work. x of f equals 2 divided by 4 plus j 2 pi f. Anywhere that I, any value that I choose for f goes right here, and then when I plug in, I end up with a complex number. So it's a complex valued function. Many of the operations that we learned for numbers, I can apply to functions. One of the ones that we do most of the time when dealing with the Fourier transform is computing the magnitude of this function now. So we're dealing with the magnitude of a function as opposed to the magnitude of a number, but the way we compute that magnitude is very similar. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's compute the magnitude of x of f. Remember by definition the magnitude of something is always equal to the square root of the original thing times its complex conjugate. So we've just used the fundamental definition of magnitude here. In this next line I've replaced x of f with just what x of f was told in the problem, 2 divided by 4 plus j2 pi f, and then I multiply by the conjugate. So when I take the conjugate of a complex or complex valued function, I find all the j's and I turn them to the minus j, just like we did before. And now I multiply this out. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. We know the cross terms are going to cancel each other out, just like they do when we do our um, complex arithmetic. And then finally, j2 pi f times a negative j2 pi f, that turns into 4 pi squared f squared. So this right here is the magnitude of x of f. And you'll notice that we are now down to a real valued function. Anytime that you take the magnitude of a complex valued function, you end up with a real valued function. You're supposed to. You have to. If you don't, you've made some arithmetic error. So this figure shows a plot of that function f was on the denominator, so as f gets very, very, very large, the denominator gets very large, which means this function is decaying to zero as f gets very, very large. And then since f was on the denominator when f is zero, that's where this function peaks. So at frequency zero hertz, this has a peak in the amplitude spectrum. And that's what we call this. The magnitude of the Fourier transform is what we call in general the amplitude spectrum of the signal.
Let's go ahead and do another example computation. We're going to have the exact same Fourier transform function that we've been looking at. Instead of computing the magnitude of this function, let's compute the angle of this function. So the same type of notation, the angle of x of f. So we need to compute the angle of this quantity. Well, we know how to do that. We know how to take the angle of a ratio of complex numbers. It's just the difference of the angle of the numerator minus the angle of the denominator. So I have the angle of the number 2 minus the angle of this quantity. The angle of 2, 2 is real valued, it doesn't have an angle, is 0. And then we know how to take the angle of this quantity. It's just tan inverse, the imaginary part, divided by the real part. So I have 0 minus tan inverse of 2 pi f over 4. And on this final line right here, I just simplified 2 divided by 4 is a half. So this turns into minus tan inverse of pi f over 2. So when I'm done, I've computed the angle of x of f. Again, I have a real valued function. This is a function of f. It's still something we need to plot versus f, but there are no more imaginary components. It's a single one-dimensional real valued function. Plot that. Here's a plot of the angle of x of f, and it has that minus tangent inverse look to it, just like it should based on our math on the previous slide. So this concludes our talk about complex and complex valued functions. The most important thing probably is recalling and remembering and reviewing how to compute the magnitude and phase of these functions because those are the quantities that we often want to look at in linear systems and signal processing and communication theory courses.